Hey guys, Mike and Hannah here with Delta. Today we're going to show you how to install a Delta Touch 2O kitchen faucet. We're big fans of Delta products, and this one might be one of our favorites. Delta faucets come in a variety of styles and finishes, really anything you're looking for to match your kitchen style. Today we're actually going to be installing a Leland Touch 2O faucet, so some of your parts and your faucet might look slightly different, but this install video will work for any of Delta's Touch 2O faucets. There's only a couple of additional steps to install a Touch faucet versus a regular kitchen faucet. And it's pretty easy to install, it's battery operated so there's no need for an electrician, and you really don't need many tools to do this install. You need a screwdriver, a couple of wrenches, and a small pot or bucket. And we recommend some safety glasses too, just because when you're working under the sink, you want to drop anything into your eyes. And also a pro tip, we recommend having a long screwdriver, because it helps to reach behind the sink where you'll need to tighten a couple of things. Lastly, you may want to grab a towel, because there might be a little water to clean up along the way. And with that, let's get started. The first step is mounting your faucet to your sink or countertop. First, we'll want to identify the mounting hardware included with your faucet. If you have a three-hole sink configuration, mount the escutcheon to the top of the sink first. Depending on your escutcheon, it may need to face a certain way. If so, it will be marked on the base plate. Our install is for a single-hole sink, so we're not going to need the escutcheon for this installation. Okay, it's time to put in our faucet. So now you're going to feed your supply lines, wire, and spout shank through the mounting hole on your sink or countertop. Now when you do this, you want to make sure that nothing is pinched and that your TimpSense LED indicator light is facing forward and that your handle is parallel to the edge of your sink. If you are alone, you can move the spout to counterbalance and that should help you. Okay, now that we have our lines fed through our countertop, one thing I always like to point out here is this manufacturer tag. If we can try to not rip that off, it can be helpful. It's got some great information on it. It's got your model number, the manufacturer date, even the customer service number. So if you have any questions, you might want to reference this tag when you have to call customer service. Next, we're going to secure our faucet to our sink or countertop. To do so, we're going to use our mounting bracket and our mounting nut and we're going to feed our sprayer hose through the center of our mounting bracket and one thing we want to make sure is that the metal portion of the mounting bracket is facing up followed by our mounting nut. We're going to push both of these all the way up the sprayer hose to the bottom of the shank and then begin threading the nut onto the shank itself. And You'll notice as we get towards the top there that there's a cutout on one side of the mounting bracket and that's for all your supply lines and your wire. You want to make sure you're feeding those in there as well as you continue pushing the bracket up onto the shank. And then next we're going to have the mounting nut up onto the shank behind it. One tip on this is as you get the mounting bracket towards the bottom of the sink you'll notice that it might get a little tough to continue turning the nut if you grab all these wires and these supply hoses with one hand and kind of hold them off to the side as you continue threading the nut it might be just a little bit easier. You want to make sure you get this hand tight you want it snug but not overly tight because this is your last chance to really center the faucet up. So this is when it's really nice to have two people. So I can be up here above the cabinet holding on to the faucet to make sure everything stays straight and centered as he's tightening the screws. That all hand tightened and everything looks good. I'm going to verify that my supply lines aren't pinched. My little solenoid wire isn't pinched either. And then that looking good I'm going to go ahead and grab my screwdriver and this is where having a long screwdriver comes in handy. I'm going to tighten up each of my set screws. Get that nice and snug and again I don't want to over tighten this I just want it snug enough that the faucet's not going to move around. And one thing I always like to do is go back to my first screw and just give it another quarter or half turn just in case it loosened up at all when I was tightening the other screw. And there we go. I think we should be set. Next we're going to install our check valves onto our supply stub outs. Now, I'm going to spare you the science and details behind why these are so important, but just know that they are required for the function of your Touch 2O faucet. To do so, we're going to begin by taking this little insert and seating it right down at the top of your supply, and then threading on the check valve over the top of it. You want to make sure nothing's pinched, and just hand thread it down onto that supply. And then this is again where your two wrenches come in handy using one wrench to support my supply stub out because I don't want to do any damage to that and then using my second wrench to tighten my check valve and again we're going to tighten it one 360 degree rotation 
you may have a marking on one of the facets of the tightening nut, so you can use that as a reference if you need to. I don't want to over-tighten it, just nice and snug. Now we have one down, and we're going to move to the other side. Now with our check valves installed, our next step is going to be to connect our faucet supply lines to our supply stub outs. And one of the most important steps in any faucet install is making sure that we get the cold supply line to the cold stub out and the hot supply line to the hot stub out. Delta's made this easy for us by color coding the tips of the supply tubes. Red's for hot, blue's for cold. Now in general the right stub out will be your cold, however I can't guarantee it so just verify that your configuration is the same. Now you'll notice these PEC supply tubes, you may have a little bit of extra tubing here. Now the way we deal with that is we don't want to cut it, but you can actually loop it to get it down to your stub out. Now one thing you want to keep in mind is this loop, you never want to be any less than about 8 inches across because you could kink it and cause the flow issue. So if you do have a little bit of a tight loop there, you can actually do more of a spiral pattern rather than a loop when you're bringing the connection down to the top of your check valve. And we're going to begin hand tightening it. And it helps to use two hands here. You want to make sure you get your PEX line straight up and down as you get that threaded. And once it gets a little snug, we're going to go ahead and use our two wrenches again. I'm using one wrench on the bottom of the check valve because we don't want to damage this at all or over tighten it on our stub out. And then I'm going to use the second wrench at the top of our supply line where it connects to the check valve. Now, you'll notice that the nut for the supply line, the tightening nut has a little diamond pattern on one facet of the nut. We're going to make sure we only turn this one full revolution all the way around, 360 degrees. And I can use that little diamond pattern to confirm that I've gotten it one full revolution, just a little bit more. There. Now I've got that diamond pattern back to the front, and we're ready to move on to the other side. With our supply lines connected, Next important step we want to do is to flush our lines, and this is because of any new construction or even a remodel. You may have some debris that may have fallen into the line somewhere along the ways. We definitely don't want that running up into the faucet since it could affect performance. So our first step is going to be to make sure that our faucet handle on the top of the sink is in the off position. Once we've confirmed that, we're going to turn our supply lines on slowly on each side, hot and cold, and then we're going to hold our outlet nozzle pointed at a bucket that we've placed underneath our cabinet because that's where the water is going to run down. Once we have that all in place, we're going to ask our helper or yourself if you have to get up there to move the faucet handle to the full mix position and then run it for about 30 seconds and that should be enough time to make sure everything's run out of those lines. So with that said, let's go ahead and get to it. I'm going to begin by turning on both of my supply lines slowly. And with those in the on position, I'm going to hold my outlet tube just to the side, point it right on my bucket because that's where the water is going to spray out. And then with everything in place, I'm going to ask my helper to go ahead and turn it into the on position. So I think I'm all set down here, Hannah. Go ahead and turn that to the full mix position. Okay. Faucet is on to full mix position, which just means it's right in the middle between hot and cold. And you want to make sure you do this so you flush both the hot and cold lines. Ready to turn off? Faucet's off. There, that looks good. So we've run it about 30 seconds. And we're going to move our bucket out from underneath the cabinet. And I've got a towel here. I'm going to wipe up any other splash or any drips that I have left. Just make sure everything's nice and dry. And we're ready to move on with install. With our lines flushed, we're almost done. There's only a couple other connections to be made. Our next step is to take our solenoid which we're going to connect to the bottom of our outlet tube. And you'll notice there's a top and a bottom. The top has the attached blue clip. So I'm going to go ahead and push that right up onto the outlet tube. I'm going to make sure that's a nice and tight connection. All right. And then I'm going to snap the blue clip into place. And then I want to give it just a little bit of a tug down to make sure it's got a good tight connection there. Next, I'm going to thread my sprayer weight onto my sprayer hose. And we want to make sure that this hose isn't tangled around any of the other supply lines or wires because this is actually going to move up.